Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released macOS Tahoe 26.1 to the public. macOS Tahoe 26.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone on all macOS Tahoe supported devices. Now this came in at 12.31 gigabytes. This is on a 16 inch MacBook Pro M4 Max, but it varies in size anywhere from about four gigabytes up to maybe 15 gigabytes, depending on the version you're installing from and the Mac you're installing to. It was released alongside many other updates with iOS 26.1 and all the 26.1 updates for iPad, TV, HomePod, Vision Pro, and watch as well. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go up to the Apple, go to About This Mac, click on Tahoe 26.1, and you'll see the build number here, 25B78. This is a new build if you are on the RC as a developer or public beta tester. So in order to see this version, you'll need to go into your system settings, go to software update. And if you're not seeing the update, turn off your beta updates and then you'll be able to install it. So once you turn it off, check for an update, you'll then have this update. As far as what's new, well, there's quite a few things to talk about. The first thing is the Macintosh hard drive icon. They've changed it from sort of the controversial look of before to this new look, so you can see them side by side. So it's got this different look to it where they've removed any notices of maybe lights or things from the front of it. Also, if we plug in maybe an SD card here in the side, give it just a moment here. Once we allow the accessory, it will show up as a drive and you'll see some of these drive icons have changed. It recognizes it as an SD card. And if I plug in an SSD, this is a Samsung T5 SSD. Again, you'll see it show up and it has a new look to it. So they've changed all of the icons for any connected drive. So let's go ahead and get rid of these. And now the next thing that's new has to do with liquid glass. Apple has made some changes to it this time around to go along with iOS 26 as well. And if we go into our system preferences and go under appearance, you'll see that we now have an option for clear or tinted. So if we switch this to tinted, you won't really see much of a difference right here, but if we go maybe into the music app, you'll see it at the bottom. So right here at the bottom, give it a second to load. You'll see that we're currently on clear. So it has sort of this clear glass look as I move it back and forth. But if I switch it over to tinted, it becomes more of a tinted or frosted glass look. So you'll see it allows it to be a little bit more legible, especially if there was text in place. So you now have the option to switch back and forth for whatever you prefer. If we go ahead and close this out, there's also a new update under our system preferences that has to do with privacy and security. This is something new under privacy and security. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see background security improvements. This is a new option to install automatically where you can install background security improvements, which provide additional protection to your Mac in between software updates. It's similar to what we had before with emergency security responses, but we didn't really get many of those updates. We only got a couple of them, so maybe Apple will be pushing out more of them. It says in rare instances of compatibility issues, these security improvements may be temporarily removed and then enhanced in a future software update. So we should be able to uninstall them as well if we're having an issue with them. If we close out of this and then open up our applications, you'll see that we now have more to select from in the same window. Before we only had about four or five applications. Now we have more across. So we have seven across and about four to five down. So we have more at one time where we can view more applications at once. Within the applications, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have an all new TV application. So you'll see here under TV that the application icon has changed. And if we go into this, there's a change as well. Now at first you may not see this, but on the left hand side, it looks like it may be a server side update. It currently says Apple TV plus it's been rebranded to just Apple TV. And this typically will disappear on your iPhone, for example. So if we close out of this and then go back into it, so we'll go back into it and you'll see that the plus disappeared. So it's been rebranded to Apple TV instead of TV plus. So hopefully we'll have some new hardware to go along with this as watching Apple TV on your Apple TV is a little bit confusing. Now, if we go back into music, there's a change here when it comes to quitting applications. So when you go to quit an application in the upper left here, we go to music, for example, you'll see that everything here has a new icon next to it. We have a new quit icon. We have a hide others, hide music, services, settings, and about this Mac. They all have a new icon next to each one of them. This carries across to multiple apps. So again, if we go back into TV, we go up to TV, you'll see that we have the same thing here. So they've just added some icons or glyphs next to the actual words. 
Within music, one of the updates they've made is maybe you're listening to some music and you want to share this with someone else. You can now use auto mix over share play. So if you go into your music settings here at the top, within the playback tab, we now have the option for auto mix. This allows it to sort of fade between different songs, but mix based on the beat. It will change the tempo and more, just transitioning seamlessly to the next one, similar to what a DJ does. But now again, this works over airplay. If we cancel out of this, and then again quit out of this, we can go into our system preferences here, and we have some updates with Apple Intelligence. It's now available in new languages. So for example, if we go here, we have about eight new languages, and you can see all of them listed here. So for example, we have Danish, Dutch, Norwegian. We also have Portuguese, Swedish, Turkish, Vietnamese, Chinese. You'll see Russian here as well. And if we scroll to the bottom, you can, you can see the rest. This carries across to the translation app on iPhone and also to the translate with AirPods app, but you don't get all of these languages, but all of these are now available for Apple intelligence. If we close out of this and we go into the newer phone app, so we'll go back into our apps here and then we'll go down to where we have phone. And within the phone app, if we go to our dial pad, you'll see that the number pad here is actually white or sort of a translucent color now. So this is updated where it was sort of a gray color before, now it's been updated. If we go back into our system settings, within system settings, if we scroll down to screen time, within screen time, if maybe you're managing a child, under communication limits and communication safety, we have some options. Communication safety will now be enabled by default for an existing child account for ages 13 to 17. However, the age will vary by country or region, but it will be enabled by default, but you can always disable it here if you'd like, if you don't want that enabled. There's also a fix for FaceTime where it's been improved a little bit. So if you're using FaceTime, they've improved the audio quality in low bandwidth conditions. There's also been a couple different updates to applications you may have already noticed down here at the bottom. Pixelmator Pro has finally been updated after four months, and it now has an icon that matches everything else for macOS Tahoe. They've also updated GarageBand, as well as Pixelmator Photo. There's also some enterprise updates to talk about, so if we take a look at Safari... If we take a look at Apple's What's New for Enterprise in macOS Tahoe 26, you'll see macOS Tahoe 26.1 listed. There's three different things. Device management services can skip the OS showcase and update completed setup panes. Also, when the declarative software update enforcement deadline is reached and the countdown to restart the device is prompted, the option to select Not Now is not available now. Also, platform SSO registration using secure Enclave key authentication and setup assistant does not prompt users for passwords when valid SSO tokens are available from the identity provider. So these are some things that are known that have been updated and are now working properly. And if we take a look at Apple's public facing release notes for macOS 26.1, you'll see that they've resolved some issues for the Apple TV app such as the Apple TV app on macOS, the search bar is missing, so that's been fixed. They've resolved issues with background assets, game controller, sudo, and Swift UI. There's still a known issue for virtualization where it says the serial number published for the virtual machine is zero, which prevents iCloud and related applications from functioning correctly. So that's one of the last known issues that they have listed here. So that's for the release notes. However, not a whole lot more to go on as far as issues or bug fixes. So Apple hasn't mentioned any additional bug fixes. However, I do believe there are some more in here. There's also some security updates as well. On Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, you'll see all of the more recent releases. And if we go to macOS Tahoe 26.1, you'll see many security updates. So everything from admin framework, and you'll see it's all alphabetical, but if we keep scrolling, core services, core text, disk images, doc, and much, much more. So you'll see here, if we scroll down, we'll keep going. There's many different updates. For example, under shortcuts, the impact or the thing that they had an issue with was an app may be able to access sensitive user data. The description or how they fixed it was this issue was addressed with improved state management. And then you have the CVE number and the person that submitted the issue. So lots of different things as far as security updates, as well as regular updates as well.
So if you're wondering if you should install Mac OS Tahoe 26.1, I would definitely recommend it for the security updates alone, but there's quite a few bug fixes throughout. It definitely seems a lot smoother as far as overall performance. I've been using it on this Mac as well as my main machine now, and it seems to have smoothed some things out so far. So just going into system settings, things seem to open quicker. They just respond better. Going into things such as software update is just nice and fast, where sometimes there was a little bit of lag before. Now this is an M4 Max, so on maybe older devices you may experience something a little bit different, but overall it generally seems to be very, very fast. As far as overall battery life, well, battery life has been pretty good. I typically use this unplugged, sometimes with a Vision Pro as an external monitor, and you'll see it was just charged up, but overall I get decent battery life using it regularly. So the other day here, you can see some of the usage was a couple hours. It's so good that I don't typically pay attention to it too much. If I'm editing a video, it definitely lasts me through a couple video editing sessions as well. When it comes to the overall battery health, this one has 100% capacity, so it's doing well, and I typically just leave it on optimized battery charging and sometimes plugged in or plugged into a monitor. So it just depends how I'm using it, but overall it's held up really well, and this is a day one launch product, so it seemed to be doing well as far as battery. As far as any other releases, if we go into the calendar here, we are expecting macOS 26.2 beta 1. We could see that as soon as maybe today or the next couple of days or possibly into next week. We do expect it very soon and probably it will be the last public release when it comes out to the public 26.2 sometime in early December typically. That will be the last release for the year and then we'll move on to January 2026 where we'll have a beta sometime around that point and then 26.3 and we are expecting the major Siri updates around 26.4 sometime in March. So that's what I would expect as far as that goes and it's been a pretty good update so far. So let me know if you've noticed anything different in this particular update I haven't mentioned already. And of course, I'll link the iPhone version to this wallpaper in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.